From family events, to volunteer opportunities, to community happenings, there is a lot going on in your community. Learn about all the possibilities and opportunities on this episode of Community Hotline. Welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel, and we're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. Community Hotline is a show for nonprofit organizations and community groups to share what they're doing in your community, all the good work they're doing. And tonight, my first guest is Shelly Williams with the Portland Columbia Symphony Orchestra. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you. So, Shelly, um, tell me a little bit. You're the operations manager, correct? That's right. That's so right. So, you and how many other staff work? For the symphony we have a glorious group of two two yes that means you do a little bit of everything that's right um, executive director betsy hatton and i share all the hats in making um, live orchestra music come so to the stage how long is this how long has the organization been in existence give me a little history absolutely uh portland columbia symphony started on the campus of Lewis, and it was a, a college and community orchestra clear back in 1982. Oh, wow. That is and a while ago. Yeah, yeah. And then over time, we've evolved and grown, and about eight years ago, we decided it would be a really fun thing to come into East County. We have several players that live and work at here mm -hmm. and are part of your community, and they said, yeah. There's room for you in East County. Yeah, there's, a, sure. there's a beautiful college theater mm -hmm. auditorium, and there isn't another orchestra of your caliber playing music live for this community. So that's when we started coming and doing our concert series here. So, and how long ago was that? Three? Uh, eight years About ago. Eight years yep. ago. So this okay. is our eighth season. Wonderful. So you now, why are you a nonprofit organization? How, how does that work? Because most symphonies, are, are, I mean, some are, but but what what yeah. makes you different than a regular um, a, a, a for profit? Symphony. Right, right. right. Um, we're a nonprofit because of the 501c3 designation. And what that means is that we can live with donations. We can take donations. Okay. And there are lots of other stipulations, but it's an IRS designation. Right. So right. that doesn't mean we should lose money. It means we want to break even, but we don't have shareholders and we don't have stock dividends and we don't have to follow the same IRS rules that a for profit company does. Okay, so as a nonprofit, um, does that, I don't know how to say this, does that, uh, encourage you to be more community oriented? I mean, what, what kinds of things do you do in the community might, besides perform? Yeah, it might, but what it does do is it, it keeps us from being the almighty dollar being everything. Oh. So okay. in that, a, that's and good in our, right there, that's mm -hmm, a good explanation. And in our situation, yeah. um, our job is to make live music to the best ability that we can for as many people as we can. And so, uh, yes, we're very community-minded. We want to know what's happening in this community. We want to know what's happening in the Portland community where we play our other concert series. And we try to connect with the audience one-to-one, -one, not only during the performance with eye contact and applause and speaking uh -huh. and the music, but also uh, one of the hallmarks of our organization is that our both of our venues are very user-friendly. They're easy to get to and we're very close in proximity between the musicians and the audience. So they're not up there on the stage. Exactly. And they don't exit behind a back door and you never see them again. They come right with their cases right through where you're standing. So you can talk to them, you can shake their hands, you can have cookies with them, <laughs> and you it. find out that they're your neighbors that live just <laughs> down the street. Isn't that something? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, the, the two venues are the Mount Hood Community College Theater. Right? When we can get in. When as you, you well in. know, yes. that venues are a... <laughs> they're, they're it's, yeah, it's difficult. It, yeah, that's yes. right. That's right. Lots of us trying to get into venues. So this year, actually, it didn't work out for us to get into Mount Okay, Hood. so this so year... We, you, we've been using the Good Shepherd Community Church. And that's worked out. That It's a lovely venue, and they, uh, they've they been very good to us. And, of course, Wonderful. it's free parking there, and you're very close. The acoustics are very interesting as, as well there. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> they're very... Um, for, for your audience who understands music, they'll understand when I use the word dry. It's very dry. So when you're playing your instrument, you kind of just hear your Yourself. Oh. But what that ends up doing is making a very clean, very articulated sound from the musicians oh. because they hear themselves much clearer, right, much right. cleaner. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
tell me, I, am I correct in understanding that you play a lot, or that the symphony plays a lot of music that is not commonly heard in, in yeah, symphony it's productions? Part of our, it's part of our mission statement to, to do a couple of things. One is to play um, well-known composers, but maybe one of their pieces that's not heard quite as frequently. So you might that. recognize the composer's name, right. but you may say, I've never heard that piece before. So you're so introducing people mission. to something mm -hmm. they may not otherwise mm -hmm. have come across. Well, and, and because the organ symphony does a fantastic job at bringing the, the regular uh, repertoire and literature, mm -hmm. the consistently well-loved and well high ranked pieces it behooves us some of the rest of us to maybe showcase sure. other stuff sure. so that's part of our mission and then we also we have two other pieces to that and that is that we try to play uh, works composed by Northwest Composers. Composers. Oh, that's so, great. That's and we great. don't always get one on every single program, but uh -huh. we at least try once a season to get somebody that has a Northwest tie. So they either grew up here or they still live here that produces a work that we can play. That's great. Well, that sets you apart a little bit. From, yeah, from other it gives us a little niche. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. And then the third part of that is that we only feature Northwest musicians, both on the stage as, as the orchestra personnel and at the podium and at the. Um, as a soloist. Really? So yeah. we're never going to hire a New York person to come here and do the work. We're going to use the multitude of wonderful musicians right. that we have right here in the Northwest. And how great for, yeah, for Oregon it's and true. the Northwest. It's true because many musicians don't get a chance to solo. They, sure. they might play in an ensemble situation, but they don't often get to be the premier soloist. Right. And so we try to uh, do a nice collection of sometimes using an organ symphony player mm -hmm. or a professor that's in the community. Mm -hmm. And then more often than not, we also try to feature up and coming young musicians who've mm -hmm. grown up here, who have teachers that, that reared them here oh, wow. and then they have either gone on to music conservatory and they come home to play in front of their family and friends. How great. Or, yeah. So, so do you work great. a lot with young people? We do and we are very thrilled that even though uh, still the majority of our audience is that the older you know, 50 and yeah, older, yeah. that's right, they still are because they love the music and mm -hmm. they, they have the discretionary income and the time to do it. Right. Often you will see a nice smattering of families with young children, and partially this is due to the fact that we have the young soloists, because their teachers will say, hey, I want you to hear my student, and they ask the rest of the students in their studio, or encourage them to come. Yeah. Um, and kids like to see each other. It's of course, of course. Thing, yeah. so. mm -hmm. You can go watch them play on the football yeah. field or the tennis court, or you can yeah. go watch so them play So we really music. do have yeah, a diverse wonderful. audience, um, a completely cross-section of, of people. That's great. Now you, um, there's some some event or some uh, performances that you've done in the past. Say the uh, Symphonic Safari. That was yeah. that was the CSL, right? Yeah. Now that was specifically geared toward children. Wasn't right. That? Right. We have an actual codified program within our organization that we call Meet the Beat, and it's our education and outreach program designed to make music accessible for children, for families, and for folks who've never come to a live performance. And see, that's going to encourage the people. You know, those kids if they're going yeah. to be introduced. To it yeah. at that young age, hopefully they're not going to wait till they're 50 to actually yeah. start yeah. coming to well, regular and it's performances. True. You know, by the time we're 50, yeah. we've kind of picked our genres that we yeah. really like. Yeah. We know what we like. We know that 80s music or right. whatever. We know <laughs> what we like, and it's a little harder for us to go experiment with new things mm -hmm. because we've grown up with it. But if you expose a child to that early on, it could open a whole new door sure. for them. Sure. Um, so yes, Symphonic Safari was one of those those kinds of programs that we developed to show kids and families, hey. Live music is really, really cool, and it's really yeah. fun. And it was a free it's concert in. It was very hands-on. Yes, wasn't it? Yeah. yes, a free concert downtown in in your new um, Center for the Arts Plaza. Right, downtown Gresham. And yes. we um, bring our entire orchestra. One of the cool things about that program is that we actually have the, everybody safari through the orchestra uh -huh. while it's playing, so you can see and feel <gasps> and what it's like. The instruments. Mm -hmm. yeah. And feel the power of a tuba yeah. right beside feel you. The vibration, mm -hmm. or yeah, that's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. I think and then really we had a lot of that. yes, mm -hmm. and adults too. Well, I, yeah. I would imagine because they say, oh, I've, I've heard my kid practice in the living room, but it wasn't like that. <laughs> you know, it didn't feel the same as when yeah, I had 12 yeah. people around right, me. Right, right. Uh, also, part of that event is, a, is an idea of hands-on arts, so we have lots of other arts things there, too. Oh, okay. Dressing up in costumes with photography and building things with your hands and painting and music because they're all hooked together. Right. right. They're all hooked together. That's great. Now, you have um, some events coming up or some performances we coming do. up. Why don't you tell me a little bit about that? Shelley? Absolutely. We have uh, more concerts in our, in our season. Our season runs 
in conjunction with the school season. So we start in the fall, September, and we're usually done by May. You get so the we summer off. Yep, that's right, the and summer you off. you do nothing all summer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. But we have two great concerts coming up, and our next uh, concert is Sunday, March 17, at Good Shepherd Community Church. Okay. And this season has been kind of a, a change for us. We're in the midst of searching for a new music director. Oh. Hugh Edwards had been our music director and our conductor for 12 years, and he did a marvelous job with us and left us in beautiful shape artistically. Mm -hmm. And um, he chose to pursue other interests, and so we are currently in a two-year process of selecting a new director. Oh, so okay. this season, we've had all guest conductors leading from oh, the podium. Okay. So they're they're all new to us. And they're probably not all local because they're... True, true. Because yeah, you would not have enough to choose from, I would. Yeah, there are lots of conductors are local, however. Yeah. You, you would be amazed really? how many there are, yeah. just between all the schools, mm -hmm. University oh, Oregon, of Oregon course, State, yeah. Yeah. Willamette University, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a lot of a lot of conductors in the area. In fact, we're finding out in this conductor search that it's a little bit like football. There are lots <laughs> of quarterbacks, but very uh, few teams. Oh, uh, okay. So yeah. it's that uh, sort too, of thing. Yeah. Too, ma too many to... Yeah, to more that. than can fill. Tough to make a decision, So though. we actually had 100 50 applicants for our position. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. So tell me so, about the conductor that's going to be at, yeah. this, at this concert. Well, and I think we have a picture of him too, so maybe oh, we can show awesome. that while you're telling yeah, us about Yeah, please him. do. Uh, Andrew Sewell is from Madison, Wisconsin, and he has a wonderful chamber symphony there, and he's very, very busy as a guest conductor in other places as well. And that's him there. Yes. He is that's originally from New Zealand, so oh. he comes to us with a great accent <laughs> and a, I love a very a bright accent. personality. Um, I was at rehearsal last night for the first first rehearsal of the concert set. So, by the way, we rehearsed five five Tuesdays in a row, and then we perform on Friday evening in Portland and Sunday in East County. In East County. So he started the rehearsal set last night, and we're doing some very exciting things in this concert. First of all, we're playing a piece by one of his New Zealand composers. Oh, that's exciting! And yeah. it's a very fun piece of music. And when you hear it, you'll you'll hear a little bit of the the Aborigine sound. You'll hear a little bit of the um, he told he told the players some of the other things to hear, and I didn't catch all of them, but I could tell as I was listening. Oh, the, I recognize that kind of a theme. So that'll be an interesting piece. Yeah, that'll be a nice. And then um, our second piece in the program features a marimba concerto, and oh, we have fun. never <gasps> had a marimba as a soloist in our 30-year history. This is our 31st season. So, and, so and this his is, name is his name is Pius Chung. Okay, and I think and we, and is that is that him? There? Yes. Doesn't that look great? That's a great. Yeah, I, he's he's amazing, and if you go to his website, you'll be stunned by all. All the work he does. He's wow. local. Uh, he's he lives in Eugene. Oh, really? He's a professor in Eugene, and his he's a composer, an active composer and performer, and he has taken a very well-known piece of music, Gershwin's mm -hmm. Rhapsody in Blue, oh, sure. and arranged and it, into it a marimba. and arranged it for marimba <laughs> and orchestra. That sounds so fun. So not only is it going to be fun, but it's so visual. You know, it's because oh, yeah. you're holding, yeah. the, and it's it's going to be very exciting, very exciting. You may end up doing more of that. Yeah, huh? yeah, no, it's going to be very exciting. And then um, our final number of this of the year or of the program is Dvorak Symphony Number no. Seven, and it's just it's stunning. It's mm. it's got everything in it, and uh, you'll love it. That you'll, sounds you'll like love it's going it. to be a great great yeah. show. The thing that most people don't realize is they think, well. I can get the CD, or I can watch it on YouTube, it's or not, it's, not it's not the, the same, same, is it? No. no, the live performance is so um, captivating, and and it's in the moment. Right. It's never to repeated to be repeated exactly like it happens ever again on the planet, exactly like how you That's experienced it in that moment. Right. You'll never have those people sitting right next to you with those same notes, with that same temperature with that same chemistry. It's kind of an amazing idea. It is, it is. Whereas I like, I like you, thinking mm -hmm. about it that way. When you listen to a CD, well, you know. It's always going it, to be the same. Kind Except of. Except maybe your maybe, surroundings. Yeah, your interaction with it is different. Right. But a live performance, the, the bows and the spit are never the same. <laughs> there you go. You know, it's, I'm, and I bet the conductor gives each performance a different flavor. Absolutely, and one of the fun things that we get to experience is that Friday night is always completely different than Sunday afternoon. Really, and in what ways? Give me an example of how things could be different. Well, between one sometimes show and on Friday nights, you can have one level of energy because mm -hmm. all the players are coming off their day jobs. Uh -huh. Traffic was busy. It's really pouring rain. Right. The audience was very full and, and 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 lively and very responsive. And Sunday it might be the opposite, or it might be even better. 
mm, than it was. Yeah. So well, they might be a little because, more relaxed coming in. And yeah, the interaction between, and people don't realize this, the interaction between the audience response and the players is magnetic, just like in a theater. They need that pull yeah. and give and take between each other. That's what makes the music so powerful. How, how do the um, musicians connect with the audience? I mean, do they make eye contact with them? They do. They do. They, yeah. they do. In fact, um, so close. People, mm -hmm, yeah. people say, "I love to sit in the front row because I can see so and so looking right at me, or I watched yeah. so and so right there." So often, it seems like orchestras are, are remote. Yeah, they're very. I far. mean, they're physically remote, but they seem. Mm -hmm. You know, sort of like a, a, a yeah. whole planet apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I think that's mostly in our perception that I'm, I'm not as wise as they are in this, and I can't understand it, <laughs> and they must know way more. They're a little loftier more. than I yeah. than I am, and yeah, yeah, yeah. And it isn't true because, basically, they are people just like you right. and me. And you said most of the, I mean, these people have day jobs. This that's is, right. This is not a, a, a position. This that is you pets. A, a woman who's a pet sitter. These are auto mechanics. This is. Engineer, oh, physician, teacher, mom. <laughs> you know, well, it's a, what are the age ranges of the musicians? So you, we how? have seventeen-year-olds to sixty-five-year-olds. Oh, we have great. a pretty broad. That's pretty broad. Spectrum. Yeah, yeah, yep. that's pretty broad. Yep, and men and women, and wow. you know, it's a pretty broad spectrum. That's wonderful. So um, after this uh, season is over, you said it'll, it'll mm -hmm. finish in May. Or, right, yeah. right. So then, um, do you have plans for the next year? Do you spend the whole summer? Planning your your next yeah, season is well, that pretty much. I think I kind of alluded to the fact that we're looking for a new music director. Right, so right. So that's going to be your focus for a while. Yeah, we yeah. hope to be narrowed down. Um, how it works in the music world, at least in our situation, is that we are going to interview several folks, and then we're going to get down to four or five mm -hmm. folks that we really think would be a good match, and then we will ask them to conduct a concert each next season, uh -huh. and that's sort of their oh, audition. Yeah. So then the audience will get to see, the board will get to see, the players will get to work with them, the staff will get to interact with them and then we'll have a, a big meeting next summer to say okay who do we want to select from these so next year will be oh, a whole be season of finalists who will become candidates for our full-time music well, position. That'll be exciting too. It will yeah. be very exciting and, and very diverse. And I'm, I'm sure they don't make the decision but would you take into account feedback from the musicians? Uh, on the oh absolutely no it's yeah. very important yeah. they're a huge part of it. Yeah, I would think uh, so. The pieces yeah. are pretty equal I mean they right. have to they have to work well with the people they're serving uh -huh. the musicians the staff and they have to connect to the audience. Uh -huh. If the audience doesn't feel the love coming back you know You've lost them. Yeah, totally it, lost it's them. not yeah. as effective. Yeah. Well, we're just about out of time, Shelly, but um, it sounds like <clears throat> your conductor for this next show is going to be very vibrant and very, very exciting. captivating, and it should be very fun. So, Absolutely. Yeah. If you've never gone to a symphony orchestra live performance before, this is one to try. It's going to be visually interesting something you will really relate to. Everybody has probably heard Rhapsody in Blue, mm -hmm, whether mm -hmm. you know it or not. Right. So it's something you'll be able to hum along with. But not in this <laughs> arrangement. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, possibly at intermission, though, right after that, you can go home and and be humming the melody. That's but, right, that's great. And yeah. bring your family, bring your kids. Absolutely, right? yeah. we are very familiar family kids. Family friendly. That's right, Wonderful. and we have a family pack price as well. Oh, good deal, so. good deal, okay. So if people are interested in getting more information, they can go to your website. Absolutely. And that's? ColumbiaSymphony.org. Okay. We have a Facebook page. Like you on the Facebook yeah, page. Yeah, you can okay. like us on Facebook, I, and I you know can I always just pick up the phone and talk to a real life person. I'm there every day. Good deal, good deal. Thank you so much, Thank Shelley. you, Monica. Thanks so much for watching this first episode of Community Hotline. We will be right back in just a few moments. We'll be talking with the Portland Women's Crisis Line. So don't go away.